Hello all guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome to the newest episode of the Noobs and Knockouts podcast, taped live on the Twitch and brought to you on YouTube, on Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. I'm Austin. I'm a knockout. Watched a lot of wrestling. I'm David. I'm a noob. Haven't watched nearly as much wrestling, and I have a sudden sense of dread that arms are going to be broken. I don't know why. I have this terrible feeling that, that that arm bones are all of a sudden not safe tonight. Blood for the blood god again! It's uh, Lucha Underground time! Yeah, baby! Yes! So, last time here on the old Lucha de Underground, I don't think that's proper Spanish, that's but you not know. Not remotely proper Spanish, but you tried. Well, I did I, did I try? You didn't, but I, I wanted to make you feel better about it. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, our big plot beat from last time is we start, we have new tur- titles! We have started the Trios Tag Tournament. And Dario Cueto hates friends, so half the teams in the tournament are people who don't like each other. Yeah, and or, and or people he's intentionally trying to get to not like each other. Yep. We had uh, Big Rick team uh, introduce his, his, his bros, Killshot and the Mac. He has a new crew now. And they beat Sexy Star, Pentagon Jr., and Superfly. They predictably didn't get along. Such a wild combo. Dario's such a rat bastard. Mm-hmm. And on that note, is Pentag- after the match, Pentagon Jr. tried to break Superfly's arm. Yep. And Sexy Star saved him. Which then led into the next week's episode, because we watched two last time, where Sexy Star and Superfly were forced to have a mask versus mask match by Dario Cueto for no reason other than the fact that he just thinks that's a big deal. No respect for tradition that on this one. He just he just thinks he just thinks it'd be funny. Yeah. Personally. He he's yeah. personally amused by it. So hey, just ruin your career a little bit. Just 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 for my amusement. Completely destroy the trajectory of your career for my enjoyment as an owner. And also probably to get me some extra money. Yeah. Sexy Star defeated old Superfly. Superfly was unmasked. It was very touching. And then Pentagon showed up and broke Superfly's arm. Mm-hmm. Sure, uh, sure wish we had seen that one coming. Who could have predicted it? Except Man, everybody. It's, 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 it's almost like he threatened to get his revenge on superfly's arm already well you know once he's claimed an arm for his arm god ah. what, he cannot he can't just l- not prepa- give the ritual sacrifice well obviously then his own arm's gonna get ritual sacrificed and we don't we don't want that no we then, don't then 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 who knows if who knows if the lucha brothers could have ever formed oh no what if you know, as, maybe, as we, uh, as we uh, point these, underground I ponder the question, what if? Oh my god. Lucha Underground's what if. That, that'd be a, oh no. Oh no. Oh dear. What if they had enough money to keep going, to actually pay everybody and keep going? <laughs> what if they actually charge for admission to their shows? Interesting questions that we'll never know the true answer to. Oh, oh, the mysteries of the universe. One can only speculate. Anyway, then we got uh, the second episode. We had the second match in the trios tournament where Son of Havoc, Ivelisse, and Angelico have been forced to tag team up with each other. Hey, hey, I, I, I was, I thought that was a very intellectually interesting match. Uh, I, for one, for instance, never realized that you could ta- legally tag in a partner by slapping them. It's true. We're learning. We're learning all about the true bounds of, <laughs> of tag team rules. Uh, but they defeated the team of Drago, Aerostar, and Phoenix. Where <laughs> Drago and Aerostar had their fourth match in their best of five series, and now that it's actually getting down to the wire, oops, it's not friendly anymore. Oh no. Yeah, God. Who could have predicted this? Oh no! If only, if if only Dario had thought about the friendship he would tear apart by doing this. 
Why does nobody think of the children? Oh. Anyway, they got the uh, the 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 odd trio, the 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 love triangle won the day, and they're going to the finals. Is it is it really a love triangle if it's literally just on Helico is into Evilise? Is that does that make it a love triangle? It's a love triangle where only where it's two one sided attractions and nothing else. Wait, what other attraction is there? Is Eva Lee? I mean, I would. Ar- I mean, I would. I would argue that if that she would prefer to still be in a relationship with Son of Havoc as opposed to have gotten dumped. Yeah, true. But I feel like that's less because she's attracted to Son of Havoc and more like she just wants an, an abuse puppy. Fair. Either way, this is a love triangle that doesn't have a whole lot of love in between it. Yeah, yeah, man, it's almost more like a hate triangle or something. But I guess that's not a phrase, so whatever. It's not a. It's not a thing. It should be. It should be. <clears throat> Anywho, uh, as for that third segment of of the, of the of the trios finals ter- of the tournament, is well, first of all, we had Johnny Mundo return to the temple. And he beat on Helico, and then he put himself in a tag team with Prince Puma and Hernandez. Hernandez being forced on Puma by Conan. And and Mundo being forced on Conan by Puma. So obviously they're going to get along great. Yeah. Look, I still don't totally get what the beef is with, Hernandez personally other than that he's just kind of like Conan personality wise and that's enough to grade on both Puma and Mundo yeah I don't think we I don't think I I think if Puma could talk some more I might have a better sense of where his head's at and why he doesn't like that her that uh Conan's old friend is is part of this group right now yeah, the silent cartoon character shtick is starting to get weird. Yeah, sadly, you're going to be waiting a while before he starts talking. Okay, I I imagine, I hope that means it's a cool moment when he finally does like talk. But but dear God, it's just it's just weird at this point. Like it was a cute meme when he was doing the interview with Conan and Vampiro. And he kept trying to talk, and Conan kept talking over him. But at this point, it's... Fuck. There's a cartoon character that this is like, who doesn't talk. But I have no idea who it is. But it's it's like that, where it's just... There just continues to be increasingly nonsensical times for him to not use his words. So, Prince Puma, though, he will be facing uh, the team of King Cuerno, Cage, and Tejano. We're all just kind of working together now. And he beat Cuerno in a match for the Lucha Underground Championship as a precursor to their match in the Trios Tournament. This is true. But it's still, everything also then broke down and ended in a fight. Yes, 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 of course, because... Mm -hmm. God, God forbid there's any there's any cohesion in the temple. Mm-hmm. We gotta have uh, soap opera levels of drama, baby. That's what Dario's here for. Johnny Mundo also passive aggressively talks shit to Del Rey, to uh, El Patron. This is true. You know, I just got this image of Dario Cueto sitting back in in a recliner. He's in a robe and slippers, and and he's. He he's got a remote. He's facing this big ass flat screen TV, and he's like, "I just need to watch my stories. My stories are on." And he flips, and it's just fucking backstage footage from his temple. <laughs> and he just and he, he just he just sighs dreamily and sips on a mug of hot cocoa. He's he is content. I feel very yeah. strongly like this is a possibility of a thing that Dario Cueto actually does. Hmm. Well, uh, due to I think these two episodes that we watched last time, uh, they had a lot. They're they're they were good at using multiple matches to kind of progress stories. So there's actually only one other thing to talk about. Oh yes, in the is the return of Black Lotus. Finally, Jesus Christ! She has she has finally revealed. 
She says she's alive and she has been informed by El Dragon Azteca, nah. the man who saw her family murdered by the monster Matanza. Yes. And now he is training her to get her revenge. So maybe we'll see a training montage with her soon. Who knows? But yes, uh, tonight we'll be watching uh, two episodes. Episode season one, episode 23, Fire in the Cosmos. And season one, episode 24, Trio's Champions. Uh, so um, so based off of the Wikipedia episode descriptors, I will say that tonight we will see the finale of the Drago Arrow Star Best of Five. Sounds about right. Yep. As well as uh, we'll be seeing the final semifinal match in the trios tag team tournament. And then, of course, the triple threat trios match for the uh, Lucia Underground trios championships. Oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to watch those episodes along with us, then you can do so at Tubi.tv. TubiTV.com. I say that multiple times. I've, I've made that mistake multiple times. Uh. Tubi TV is basically a streaming service, but it is completely free with ads. Uh, there's a, a, a pretty wide selection of, of kind of B-level and indie fare that you can find on Tubi, and included on Tubi is the entirety of Lucia Underground. Yeah, baby. It's very convenient. And again, it's just, it's free. You just make an account and you are set. Yep. It's dope. Yep. Uh, so we will be back in the back half to talk about uh, Lucha Underground Season 1, Episode 23 and 24. Woohoo! Yep. And we are back. We have just finished Season 1, Episodes 23 and 24 of Lucha Underground. Damn, have I mentioned before that I fucking love Lucha Underground? Because I fucking love Lucha Underground. Feels like it's been too long since you've said it. Like a whole month, maybe. Jesus, a whole month? I don't say it nearly enough. Hey, guys, I fucking love Lucha Underground. It's fair. It's, it kicks ass. Two great episodes to add to the collection. Indeed. Indeed. Of Indeed. great episodes of Lucha Underground. Indeed. Damn, right. we, 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 were, we were strong from like frame one on this one too this this one uh, the first episode we watched the what was the name of it again it had such a fucking crazy wild name i think it might have just been the pilot or boy little heights no 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 for no first episode that we watched tonight oh tonight okay i thought you meant like no overall. god no no god no no <laughs> okay no. fire fire in the cosmos fire in the cosmos fucking wild name and off the bat we're just we're just fucking rolling in to to aerostar on the roof looking up at the stars and dario shows up on the roof too and within two sentences has a roll credits moment about you're look you're looking up at the cosmos like like yeah. we're just we're firing on all cylinders for this one dario credit was just doing bits with, Dude, with dario. Him, and, him, and, him and drago Dario's doing bits all night. Dar Dario just gets more and more screen time each episode. I, I love that we're getting Dario out of his office more. Uh, mm -hmm. I really like putting him in different locations. And I love putting him out on the floor. It makes him feel like he's a real person, as silly as that sounds. It feels like he was actually here for when they taped stuff. Well, yeah, he literally was in those cases. Yeah. It's it's so it's it there there is this bizarre like feeling to getting Dario like out on the the lucha floor. It almost feels to me like this is such a weird comparison, but this this feels like like uh, a a show at a theme park where it's the show is based on an IP, but they have to have real people. Played. Oh yeah, so like, so like, Dario is like part of like the pre-tape stuff that they yeah. have at the parks to make yeah. to connect people, like but the famous actor, like the famous actors from the real thing. They do their, yeah. and like, then they the video. The IRL Dario out there, and mm -hmm. it's and it feels different. 
it's the same Dario, obviously, <laughs> but that's like the vibe I get. I have no idea why, but Dario is such a like put him up on the big screen character that when he shows up in person, it's this weird culture shock of like, what the fuck are you doing here? I actually, uh, yeah, uh, not to derail this a little bit. I also, I feel like the best time to say is that like this weekend when I was with, when we were co- during college football weekend, I, there was an ad with Dario Cueto's axer in it. <laughs> And I was like, Wait, hey, what? I was Wait, like, hey, what? yeah, I oh, forget what the ad was for. I forget. But no. I was like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> no. Well, that's so wild, too, because he just showed up in AAA, didn't he? Yeah, but remember that he's like a real actor. No, so. I know. I know. But the fact that they got him back to be Dario Cueto again. Oh, yeah, in, in MLW, MLW, yes. It's absolutely insane to me. Mm-hmm. But that way, oh god, no, that's awesome. I, he's such a good actor. He deserves to be in so much more, dude. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. But anyway, so yes, he is on this. He's hanging out on the roof with uh, if uh, Aerostar, and he just immediate and he says so many puns and jokes. He does. He does. Oh, oh I, I, I will say though, as much as Dario's kind of kind of memeing up here, I really liked this opening sequence it was a cool different way to open things and also it was low-key kind of beautifully shot they got a great shot on the night sky and and eros are looking up to it and this great lower slightly below looking from below angle up uh, up on Aerostar and Dario, so they're kind of like towering above the camera mm-hmm. a little bit, and it felt so. It felt really kind of beautiful. I was impressed with the camera work. Yeah, and you got and you got Aerostar like looking up into the yeah. into the night sky. Other, yeah. not really. We're looking up at him. He's lo- he's looking up. Yeah, the 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 camera angle from below just added so mm-hmm. much grandeur to the to the sequence. I thought it kind of fucking rule no that it was awesome and it is is just him kind of like reiterating the stakes of the night and and contrasting drago and the arrow star he's like you get your powers from above from the cosmos but drago he he gets powers from down below yeah <laughs> they never say hell here but no but i mean he's the, the drago is is billed as being from inframundo so yes yes also, they, they, he, they acknowledge he's from hell, but they don't say it out there in so many words. Yeah, they, they say it in more words. Uh, yes. But we get Dario ending the convert well, conversation. Dario is the only one talking with everything in my temple has a price. And hmm, that man, that's not ominous at all. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that price in a minute. Yeah. In, in a bit. We finally figure out what the fuck the special opportunity unique opportunity and heavy air quotes as Dario himself is wont to do. Yeah. But overall, really cool shots and and idea and like cool scene. I'll put it like that. I know. It was great. I I love it. It the the cinematography was on fucking point for that one. They have nice. great kind of landscape there. Yeah, kind of nice job using the building that you're in. Because we usually just see the office or the locker room or the locker room area, the weight room area, and the, the bathroom. I really wonder if those are all actually in the building with them or they're all just fucking soundstage bits. I wonder. I have no idea. I don't know. But then we get to then we get to show proper. Off the bat, I have to say this episode, Vampiro's really feeling himself. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what was going on, but I'll have what he's having. Vamp is fucking hyped up, and he stays that way for the entire episode. Dude is dude is having a night. Pretty high. I mean, it's a pretty hyped episode. A lot. The match wise, the stuff that he would be a part of was all about the trios tag tournament. Four of the six matches tonight had something to do with that plot line. So. Definitely oh, the A all. plot of the C yeah. of the episodes in total. Yeah, and we roll right in to that mm-hmm. tag, a trio's tag championship with the qualifying match of Team Puma versus Team Cuerno. Yep. I love how Tejano, Cage, and Cuerno feel like this League of Supervillains esque team 
where it's three dudes who are all kind of their own little flavor of evil all coming together because they share the same evil purpose and they're all just these big boys who are angry and want to hurt people something about the they they don't fit together in an individual sense they don't have any cohesive theming tying them together but man they are three baddies working together and it's such it's so much fun to, to look at them as a group Calling them like a legion of, of doom kind of thing is they kind of, of yeah. Like, it does fit, fit that fit that entirely. Salad of heels is how I is mm-hmm. how I think of it. They all have their own flavor and aesthetic, but they're all there to do some bad shit, and that's why that's why yep. I that was fun. And then and then of course we get the team Puma coming out, and of course Puma's still fucking mocking Cuerno's pelt. Oh yeah, he he's not done that 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 that. Jaguar hell head was not cheap. <laughs> oh man, we, yeah, you you know what? You're right. We pay too much for this costume. Paste only use it once and then throw it out. Puma, yeah. get your goddamn money's worth, or else. Yeah. So Puma, Mundo, and Hernandez, and they have an inter- They they kind of don't play up the a lot of tension with that group tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll get to it in the future. Absolutely. With that, but until we get to the results here, yeah. but I I kind of liked the dynamic of Hernandez as being the strongest boy in this party. Oh, and he's then, so and strong. He is. He like he basically he has a long extended sequence with with King Cuerno, yes. and and then Cuerno he just beats Cuerno's ass. It's so good. He's so cheeky, too. You fucking get hit. He, and he kind of does the big Rick thing of playing up that didn't hurt. Except mm-hmm. he's really fucking smug about it. So he just kind of mugs at the audience like, Ugh, really? This guy thinks he hurt me? Well, yeah. bye-bye and drops him. It's so good. I love I love how he looks in Rick. Because, yeah, he's this big, tall, muscly boy. And and he just does not let himself get hurt. It's such a funny fucking effect. Yeah. And then of course you got Puma and Mundo just going out of their goddamn minds. Oh, with their flippy yeah. shit. Yeah. P- P- uh, no, not Puma. The other one. Mundo does just CrossFit. He's got to get flippy. Also, no, he, like when he does that stupid nonsense when he's got um. Tejano in the tree of woe position in the corner, and he's, he kicks him in the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight, and as he nine. goes about to go for ten, he go he steps back and he does like a he does like a corkscrew twist midair yeah. for the sack for the tenth kick. And I'm like, you extra motherfucker. Well, here's the thing: for as much as we're playing up, Mundo and Hernandez don't get along. I really like the fact that they're both ostentatious as fuck, and that works together really well visually in Ring, because they mm-hmm. both just love showing off how cool and good they are in different ways, but they're both little showmen who are just having a little bit of cheeky fun. So I, yeah. feel, I feel like that created a fun little dual aesthetic there. Also, sidebar, I fucking love just the fact that Vampiro is constantly ragging on Conan in the commentary every oh, yeah. he, get, he gets he just throws a little dig at conan he, he just so does not like him and he he's it's so funny how he just will not let that little grudge go he got pissed at conan once for interrupting puma in the interview and he does not let go of that stuff. he's like now fuck this guy forever can't trust him he's a piece of shit also striker with a sting reference at cage yeah, at one point Cage just starts laying in. I think he might have done the stinger splash too, to be fair. But then he he's like, "Is the man called Cage?" Well, I thought that was when he first. I didn't think that was before he even fought. I think that was like when they first showed up. Maybe a no. Oh, he was no, definitely was doing stuff in ring. In, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's that's right. It was mm-hmm. at that point. But yeah. Also, also something about this match, I really, really like. It was a small thing, but something that gave me a lot of satisfaction. So, Cuerno's been this big, scary, bad guy boss for a lot of the run of this show thus far. And for good measure. They play a him B, a, B, a B-tier team. boss. B-tier boss. Well, he's really powerful. He's mm-hmm. terrifyingly smart. And he's quick and he's nimble. He is 
adept at everything. He is he is your worst enemy to have in ring in a lot of ways because he's just the all arounder can do fucking anything, and that makes him a really imposing figure to uh, to see in ring. I think for me, the most imposing figure I see in ring out of all of them is King Cuerno. And it always stresses me out watching my faves fight him because, dear Lord, they're going to, oh, they're going to get hurt. Oh, no. But they they have this great little thing of Puma and Mundo see Cuerno winding up the his finisher at one point to use against Hernandez. And yes, okay, I, I want to stop to talk how I love the shot on this, talking about cinematography. Yeah. Is Hernandez had just done a dive to the outside, and he's like mugging for the crowd, mm -hmm. and they frame it so you is in the background. You get this really cool like front to back shot of Cuerno qu putting the quiver to for the arrow from the depths of hell. Yeah, his dive, and then yeah. And then yeah. Puma and Mundo team up to stop Puma him. And Mundo team up and catch him. And I can't remember if commentary points this out or not, but something I realized in that moment at the very least, uh, wait, no, yeah, commentary does point this out, is it's Puma and and Mundo who have both historically fought against Cuerno and had varying degrees of loss and victory adapting to him. Mm -hmm. They they have come to understand the great hunter. They have They have been his pray enough times that they they're learning more and more how to fight back and i really like that what a great way to show some of your top heroes standing up to one of your most imposing villains i really mm -hmm. like that progression for them it's a small little thing but it's so monumental to see them find little ways to really effectively combat cuerno's tactics i thought that was a phenomenal mm -hmm. moment absolutely and uh, was also, this is this match was the first appearance of Delavar Davari. Uh, so yeah, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Yeah, okay. Austin, Austin's Wait. commenting on him, and he's just kind of like sitting in the audience. I was like, oh, this guy. I didn't realize he showed up this early. Okay, and I'm like, oops. Yep, Delavar Davari. Okay, so his he his biggest role. Uh, before this was working in WWE as Davari. And basically he was an evil era. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. So his first major role was with Mohammed Hassan in 2005. Mohammed Hassan was a character where that was basically like, I am a Muslim American and I am treated poorly because of 9-11, because of you Americans and how you act post 9-11 and the war in Iraq. And everyone booed him for it. Oh, God, no. And then... To make it, and that character was written off TV because eventually they decide to transition him into kind of, instead of being like a sympathetic heel character who is like making a good point about racism in America, yeah, he kind of eventually becomes a terrorist stereotype. And not only that, he also becomes a terrorist stereotype. The episode where the, he transitions to this as part of his character happens on the ex airs on an episode of SmackDown the exact same day as the 7 7 bombings. Oh, wait, you mentioned this before. I have, I have casually mentioned guy? this to you. This, uh, this was Davari, Davari was the manager to that guy. Jesus Christ. And then, of course, they like, after that happens, they quickly kind of run that character away and then for the next several years of time Davari is just kind of like the evil Arab manager character like if you need a care if you need to like if you need it to get across that a character is a bad guy that you should boo put Davari with him those damn Arabs can't have heels without having some racism am I right boys <laughs> He does end up having a semi-prominent role when the great Kali, who is a seven-foot-tall Indian wrestler, first came to WWE as a monster heel before they turned him into a, like, goofy baby face. That's a whole other story. But Devar, when he was the evil heel monster, Davari was his manager. But then he was released. And after that, he kind of just he bounced around the indies 
for pretty much the rest of his career, actually. Like, he had little stints in TNA. He had a little stint in Ring of Honor. He did all the indies. And now he is here in Lucha Underground. Well, I'm happy for him. I guarantee you he'll get treated with a lot more respect than he did in WWE. Man, we keep seeing that as a, as a theme. I will, I will tell you that 100% he will not be playing an evil foreigner in Lucha Underground. Yeah, they keep doing this thing where they take heels of non-white races who were disrespected by the WWE and made into heels into kind of cultural hero baby faces, or at least this dude is super awesome and you should fucking respect him characters. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, he, he kind of gets a lot of, lot of, lot of like, he, he is the Chekhov's gun of this episode. Hey! You know, if you, you, know, if you introduce a, a new character in the stands in the first act, in the third act, he's going to interfere. And that <laughs> act certainly happens. Them. <laughs> that dates this show. That dates... Look, I already mentioned Full Gear like twice already. I've dated the fuck out of it. I'm just going to roll with it at this point. Yeah. But yeah, we will get more of Divari. He shows up. In, pre- in most matches the rest of the night, just kind of sitting there being like, yeah, yeah, this is some good wrestling. Uh, I'll, but we'll get back to him in the last match of the second episode. Yes, good wrestling. But yeah, uh, the match ends when, uh, despite their best efforts, uh, the the bat, the Legion of Doom, <laughs> they, def- they pin Prince Puma, and oh, they defeat shit. him uh, with a little bit of help from the old bull whip. Well, of course, you can't you can't have Tejano in the match without a bullwhip. No, yeah, no, a waste of Tejano. Cuerno gets the roll up and gets the gets the pin on Puma, and it's kind of a striking moment because you're like, oh mm-hmm. shit, Puma doesn't lose very often in the temple. Will will this mean that Tejano that we see more Tejano and Cuerno facing facing Puma for the title? I guess we'll see. Yeah, I I wonder what's gonna happen with cage because his belt aspirations are sure they have are not doing great right now but he doesn't seem to take defeat well so we'll fucking see Mm -hmm. uh but but yeah oh my god the champion got pinned so he doesn't get to be a double belt holder and he has the disrespect of oh shit he got pinned by someone who doesn't hold the title oh no yep so after that uh dario makes his first in-ring appearance of the night he comes i want to point out too like Something I was thinking during this match is Team Puma gets a lot of really cool moments. I'd argue even more than Team Cuerno gets. I'd agree. But but yet Team Cuerno still gets the dub, and that seems kind of almost to defeat the rule of cool of wrestling. But I was thinking about it, and I realized maybe it's less so a this wasn't paced well thing, and more of a... Team Cuerno is so OP just because they have the three top heels, aside from Penta, all rolled into one, mm-hmm. and they're all fucking powerful as shit and, and can just do some damage, that taking down the champion as a team effort is almost effortless for them, which makes them a scary fucking group. And uh, it's a, a yeah. cool kind of thing I noted about that. If they can stick together, that's, that's a real danger to Puma. That's, yeah, well... That's a big if for any tag team, as we've learned on this show. That's true. Uh, after the but then, yes, after the match, Dario appears, and he's he's very excited about next week's uh, trios title match. But you know, he would like a preview r- tonight, and so he tells that we are going to have a three way match between one member from each team, and he says, you know. Cage, Tejano, and uh, Cuerno, decide amongst yourselves who's going to wrestle because we're wrestling right now. Yep. Yeah. He he wants a little sneak preview, which is crazy. Yes. Not always, not always, you don't always see the heels be the sympathetic characters in the way of Dario's madness, by the way of Dario's manipulations. The, but everyone's sympathetic in the, in the, in, in contrast to Dario goddamn Cueto. Hmm. So we end up, getting, we have the match. It's Cage is the one who sticks around from among yeah. the heel team. And then uh, the other members are the Mac 
and Son of Havoc. Which is an absolutely wild matchup. Like, it's such mm-hmm. a crazy hodgepodge of of these all very talented workers, but who otherwise don't really have all that much to do with each other. But we do get a great match out of it, because all three mm-hmm. of course are phenomenal in their own right. Matt, Mac is surprisingly nimble. Cage, of course, is the machine TM, but he really is strong as shit. And Havoc is a great all-arounder, just really good at at doing some damage and throwing some strategy into how he's mm-hmm. fighting. So all three f- working together, well, working in the wrestling sense together. Yeah, yes, was a fun. It was a fun spectacle and helped pad out the episode, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, also, I want to give a shout-out to Cage, being one of two wrestlers on the show who had to wrestle three matches in the same day because this episode and the episode, the other episode we watched tonight were both taped on the same day. Yeah, that's so freaking brutal, dude. I can't wrap my head around that. That's so nuts. Oh, yeah. But inevitably, the machine is too strong. They, 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 they And the commentary says, like, oh, rip, because... Son of Havoc was on his way to getting the dub. He had he had Mac all set up. He's going for the shooting star press. And then and Cage, Cage grabs the Mac, way. pulls Mac away, and like throws him into the into the into the fencing. The metal you fences know, that cover the ring clogs him right there. You know, if we're using academic theories on suspense for this one, I really have to liken this moment to Alfred Hitchcock talking about the bomb under the table because when we saw when we saw Havoc setting up for the shooting star press, I uh, David, I lost your audio in the middle of that sentence. There we are. Hello. Hello. Okay. Anyway. So, if we're talking about academic theories on suspense here, I kind of have to liken something here to Alfred Hitchcock talking about the bomb under the table. Because Son of Havoc is setting up for the Shooting Star Press, right? And while he's doing that, I noticed Cage in a position that I don't normally notice him in, which is down on the ground, sitting and watching. And I thought that was unusual. And if we want to talk about cinematography again, the fact that it, this match in this moment is being shot in such a way that you notice Cage, because Cage is kind of, he, he's outside the ring, he's on the floor, and he's kind of hanging on the apron looking up. And you're like, all right, what's he doing? Because Cage normally doesn't do this. It's weird to see him kind of sitting one out, even if it's strategically him trying to catch his breath. It's so weird to see him doing this. And... So we cut back and forth between kind of this overhead view where we see Cage and Havoc just in the corner setting up for that shooting star. And right as he goes for it, we cut back to the overhead and Cage pulls the Mac out of the way. And all of a sudden we see, damn, even in the moments where we think we see some vulnerability for Cage where he needs to catch his breath or something, it's still all part of his work, all part of his plan, his machine, his machinery uh, uh, machinations to 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 get the machinery machinations look look i'm i had a striker moment don't judge me i it's it's all it's all part of his plan to get the dub at all costs no matter what he has to do so i so appreciate it that we had i i i noticed like wow we're actually seeing cage right nope it's just it's all part of the it's all part of the bit god damn it's uh, it's so well crafted for moment to moment, mm. dude. It's so I fuck God, I love this show. Yes, but then and, uh, and also Kane... and also not to speak nothing to, to say nothing of the fact too that this was a total filler match that they still made obviously entertaining. But B, they actually gave something to by just being another highlight of what a fucking flippant, psychopathic, narcissistic, greedy rat bastard Dario is of just. You just wrestled a match, wrestle some more for me, dance for me, because I think it would be entertaining. Bye bye. Oh, God. 
the, even the filler serves fun little purposes. Oh, I love this show. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. And then, but Cage does get the W. He pins Son of Havoc with the Weapon X. And poor Cage. I mean, that is a Wolverine reference. He's a Cage is a giant fucking X Men nerd. Anyway, Cage oh, yeah. gets the dub. And the, he has the vaunted momentum. <laughs> which I lampshaded about five seconds before Stryker said it unironically. Yeah, they've got the momentum. God damn it, Stryker. So, much, so many tropes that are so silly. Mm-hmm. Oh, Christ. What, what does momentum mean in this context? Please I explain. I really don't know. All right. After the next thing we get is we're in the bathroom. <laughs> and Drago is in front of the mirror. And guess who comes out of that stall but Dario Cueto. Of course, of course, naturally. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot. He hits a lot of the same beats he hits with Aerostar, so not a whole lot yeah. to really say there. But of course, now we're in the basement of the, or presumably the basement of the temple, because it's all down low in the locker room area. So of it's course, all up, it's all thematic. It's all thematic. So we we met Aerostar amongst the heavens, and we met Drago amongst the depths. Also, I love the fact that Dario's pulling the ultimate power move of just walking out of a stall after having, after having just taken a piss, still zipping up his fly, just yep. casually making conversation to Drago mm. as he's trying to hype himself up for his he's, match. He, oh, he's that kind of guy in the public bathroom. Yeah. Also, he said something about, I remember the first time we talked, and I'm like, talked when? Half the people on this show are practically nonverbal, Drago included. Yeah, I mean, it's the first time we talked in this very bathroom. In this very bathroom. Yeah, I <laughs> know. What, what is with Dario meeting his workers under bizarre circumstances in bathrooms at a fucking restaurant with a built in. Oh, no, no, no. Mariachi Loco wasn't even a mariachi performer. He was a dishwasher at a, at a, oh, yeah. a, in the kitchen of a restaurant, presumably. What, Dario, how do you find these people? What is your method, dude? I don't. What is your business model? <laughs> don't question his madness. I what? I don't even know if there's method in it, Austin. There's always a method to the madness. Uh, he is a super genius. If you say so. <laughs> uh, then we get a bit in the ring with Pentagon Jr. He is not, they say explicitly that he is not having a match tonight. So they're like, what is he doing here? Yeah. And he whispers uh, something to Melissa Santos, who is the ring announcer. And she, and she says that Pentagon has instructed me to say that this next sacrifice will be done for his master. And as she's trying to walk out of the ring, Pentagon just runs up to her. (laughs) Yeah, and starts what? grabbing her because spoiler warning, because oopsies, today's sacrifice is you, Melissa Santos. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it that makes it sound like she's won some sort of like prize. Congratulations, <laughs> Melissa Santos. You are the winner of one arm breaking. Yeah. And so we've we've talked about how like the, conti- the the weird fact that nobody boos Pentagon Jr. for any of this shit he ever does. I even booed him a little bit. They, I was going to say is that this is probably the most he gets booed. Yeah. Is when he attacks Melissa Santos, who isn't a wrestler. And on the subject of Vamp feeling himself, he, Vamp, Vamp gets real indignant about this. He's like, fuck it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get up there. He's, he's 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 throwing off his headset and he looks ready to fight Pentagon himself because he wants to white knight Melissa Santos, yeah. I guess. And but but of course, who should come a run in but sexy goddamn star <laughs> saving her fellow Wom from the tyranny of of the evil, horrible arm breaker man himself. Uh, it was uh, it was amazing, and I love mm-hmm. this impromptu beef between the two of them. Yep, she is a sexy star has now put herself as the defender against Pentagon Jr.'s evil, and Pentagon doesn't appreciate that at all. Yeah, oh, yeah, really? I uh, hmm, wouldn't have guessed. He's like, Why were you not let me just take physically dominate this woman and break her arm? Why am I not allowed to do that? That's very rude of you, yes. So, Pent uh, sexy star is able to push Pentagon off enough to escape. 
with Melissa Santos. And once again, Pentagon swears vengeance. Uh, he will have his revenge. And he will certainly try next episode. True, true. Yeah. But first, we have the main event of this episode, Drago versus Aerostar. The final match of the best of five for the unique yes. opportunity. Which, again, I can't stress enough. Dario himself puts in air quotes. And, and man. Yes, they, we... they, they, do, they do a smart thing here where, like, they, Melissa Santos has written off the rest of this episode. And Dario is doing ring announcing duties. Oh, Dario on mic is a wild time. Okay. I'm going to make a comparison here. So Dario is there to announce the match for Melissa. And honestly, I just think that's a good move anyway. Dario's been the harbinger of this entire pseudo rivalry for, for, from, from the beginning. So of course he's the one that's got to announce the final, the final match. And he's super into it. And this reminds me, I'm going to, I'm going to steal kind of something from another much more famous podcast. This reminds me of, you know, have you seen on Twitter, Austin, the account that shows all that, that just, it's a bunch of different videos of SNL guests introducing the musical artist of the week. No. Okay. Yeah. There it's a whole meme. It started off with, there's an account that every Friday posts. I know I've seen. Okay. okay I've okay, seen ladies and gentlemen, the, the weekend, ladies and gentlemen, the weekend, but then that's, that I think has, has inspired an account that shares every SNL guest announcing the musical the musical act of the week and a lot of them are really low energy a lot of them you clearly they, they clearly don't give a shit they either like don't know who the who the uh who, who the musical artist is or don't care or just kind of like i'm just here to do my job and they deliver kind of professionally but then there was nathan lane and nathan lane announced metallica and what wow 90s that is a yeah that is a that is a match made somewhere and of all the people you would not think broadway man nathan lane would be super pumped about metallica but but nathan lane like the pro that he fucking is gets up there and goes ladies and gentlemen metallica (laughs) And, and i get the same vibes from that as I do from Dario Cueto announcing Aerostar and Drago tonight. Dario's mouth unhinges like a snake, drops wide open, and he announces Aerostar and Drago. He he goes so ham for it. I love Dario on mic. And oh boy, when he yells ring the bell, you ring the bell! could have been summoning forth the forces of hell to emerge from his mouth to say those words it was incredible i love mm, keep up the energy Mm. buddy it's so it's so good and we also get dario spending the entire match outside of the ring just kind of like evilly smirking the whole time oh yeah he's just he's just so entertained by the violins Mm-hmm. He's so, uh, he's, I, I, I literally wrote in my notes God Dario was so horny Yeah he was <laughs> So oh, Dr- Drago and Aerostar Final match They, they go to town on each other they, so, oh, Yeah I mean of course Of course mm-hmm. the, These matches have gotten progressively more Aggressive and violent And this one This one went the furthest The fucking table gets brought out at some point Drago brings out a table And of course we all know Austin's first rule of wrestling, if somebody brings out a table, they are the one who must needs go through it. I need to find Mm -hmm. a better, uh, a more eloquent way to put that in the future, but yes. And so Drago gets out the table, so of course he fails at putting Aerostar through, and Aerostar bops him through that table instead. Oh, we're go, we're firing it on all cylinders for this one, boys. We're outside the ring, there's some flippy shit, oh Oh man, do they want that unique opportunity real bad? Which is, God, I really don't understand why these men don't see how deeply ominous the unique opportunity. When again, their boss himself, I can't stress this enough, is putting the words unique opportunity in air quotes himself. Guys, come on. Somebody see through this ruse. 
Listen, the spacemen, spaceman and dragon man dragon. are trusting. Listen, dragons and the dragons in hell, where Drago is from, are very forthcoming. They're, they don't they don't deal in manipulation. Maybe that's why they all died out. Oh, so so this isn't this isn't like this isn't the 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 the, the depiction of hell where the devil and all his compatriots are these wily shysters who will try to lose No, they people. are. No, they are, but not the dragons. The what? dragons specifically. So the, the, dra dragon. the dragons the, the dragons from hell specifically have have principles. They yes, they are that is what I am like That ways. is what I am suggesting is being told here. Is you the is the That's fair. Mhm. Mm Dra Drago, the Drago the dragon from hell is one who simply just projects his own goodness on mm -hmm. God. And that's why, and that is why Drago is the last living dragon. Yeah, I because because they're all too trusting. <laughs> yeah, sure, we'll go with that. What? Don't ask me to make sense of any of that. Anyway, okay. we get we get to the end of the match, and Drago does this sick pin thing where he oh gets like God. under. He gets under. It's almost like a bait. It's almost like a base. That's a baseball slide pin, but like it's almost like a crucifix pin, where he is under, um, Aerostar and Aerostar's shoulders are. He's like bridging above Drago. Uh, it's pretty sick. It's 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 great. Well, they they do kind of a roll around at first mm -hmm. too. There there's a little bit of a back and forth there, but yeah, Drago gets a super unique pin on arrow and i really appreciate that because it, it again it adds it adds something a little bit spicy to, to the end of this whole thing is and, and it also does make it feel like both of these men at the end of this as brutal and fucking unnecessary as this as as in 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 cave in storyline i mean not mm -hmm. not like oh man this was unnecessary why did i have to watch this no but yeah. but unnecessary in that fucking dario put together because of course he did uh it does show that kind of at the end of this, the, the, these two men are better workers for having gone through this rigorous crucible with each other. Mm -hmm. So much so that at the end of it all, they shake hands and I guess they're friends again, which yeah. don't totally get why. Well, I guess I guess I mean, just kind of ran high for a hot second. Yeah, I, I, I saw it as like the only reason they weren't friends for a minute there is because now they're in this like intense competition with each other and now that that's out of the way there's not really any personal beefs left yeah. to fight to settle so we can just be bros again yes and and as as Air, drago is 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 celebrating and comes dario to explain his unique opportunity yes and he, he tells Dr drago that he's he that he is going to give drago the, the biggest prize that he can provide him. A shot at the Lucha Underground Championship. Nice. But. 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 If Drago loses and doesn't win the Lucha Underground Championship from Prince Puma, he is banned from the temple forever. <gasps> forever? No, he is. He is going to go walk, go down the walk of shame and yeah. get on the boat and leave the island, and he can't come back. Yeah, it ever. Was really it, it was it, ever. Yeah, no, it was really funny because Dario gets on mic and announces it, and he's like, "Yeah, I, I will give you the best prize I know how to give you." Uh, top contendership match for the championship. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And, but I'm like, oh, that doesn't actually seem that ominous. And then there's a brief pause, and I'm like, wait for it. And Austin's like, wait for it. And then, <laughs> but. Yep, there's always a but. There's, all, there's always a but. Yeah, so of course, of course there is a caveat. Nothing in my temple comes, or no, everything in my temple has a price. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just you're just keep cutting your roster, dude. I guess My, he he just assumes he can find more people to replace me. I I think he just is like 
man, the initial roster I hired wasn't nearly evil enough. Let's find people who I are... need more of that. I need more, yeah, more of that. I like that energy, you know? Mm -hmm. I need I need to just kind of clean house and get get more of that energy. It's it's really it's really I think it's very healing, you know? It's very it's very mm -hmm. healing to be immersed in that much pure. Oh, it's Oh, it's very healing, all right. Oh man, There's healing's going on all over the place. Um, <laughs> ah, 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 I didn't even mean that. Oh no! Oh no! I accidentally did the best pun ever. Oh no! I'm ah. sad. I'm sad that you didn't mean to do that. I am sad. I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't, but proud that I went there anyway. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think it was subconscious. Uh, sure. Uh, we move on to episode 24, Trio's Champions. And we start Black with Lotus. Lotus. Black Lotus. She is did still you, training. Did you call her Blotus? No, I said Black Lotus. Oh, okay. I heard Blotus, and I kind of want to refer to her as Blotus from now on. That's her ship name with somebody. I'll come up with an answer for that later. <laughs> uh, Sure. Or, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just like Blotus. So, yeah, Blotus is Black. Is black. <laughs> Blood is back. <laughs> Blood is, is back. You know what? Maybe Blood is wasn't such a great idea. She is, anyway. <laughs> Black <laughs> Lotus. It's back. Oh, no. She is doing. She's uh, doing a diary bit, and she's just talking about her training with and with Dragon Azteca, and she's like, he's not, he doesn't think I'm ready. He says that my anger is my weakness, and I think my anger is my strength. Greatest strength. Well, I'm sure I'm sure that'll go well for you. Mm -hmm. I've seen these kind of movies before. And so she then goes to do training with Al Dragon Azteca. Mm -hmm. And so he turns out the lights and he makes her fight five NPCs yep. in the dark, and she just kicks their ass. She kicks their asses real good. Lucha Underground loves beating up NPC characters in these yep. in these videos packages, and eventually okay, he he turns the lights back on, and Dragon Aztec is like fight me, and she has an upper hand at first, but then she gets still gets caught by El Dragon Azteca and he and he beats her and he's like you're not ready, yeah. Uh, gotta say. We got a some something approximating a training montage, so uh, dreams and hopes paid off, and of course it's in a warehouse because where the hell else does anybody? I'm pretty sure it's in the same training? warehouse as the Conan video. Yeah, I have which which man they're either performing this under good weather or they finally got that roof patched up. Man, yeah, they, they, really, they really need to do some work on that place. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know, but uh, but <laughs> no. We, we we get it's it's a cute little thing and it's a great preview of what mm -hmm. Black Lotus is going to be like, I'm sure, in ring. Right, she's, right, right. She's she's quite adept, very, very She's good a at, striker. She's a strike yeah, no. She's 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 really great at lashing out at multiple opponents at the same time. She seems, seems like she's very quick on her feet, great at adapting to difficult circumstances. So it's honestly a great little subtle way to hype up seeing her mm. do whatever in-ring fighting we're gonna see from her. That's super dope. Yeah. Uh then we get back to we cut, we get on back to the temple for the first match of the night. Sexy Star versus Pentagon Jr. And really appreciate the, the the touch the work they do with Melissa Santos here, yeah. where she is clearly a little up upset at having to to um, give Pentagon Jr.'s name, and then she gets out of the ring and she's limping, and the whole rest of the night her ankle is like taped up. Yeah, and she's limping around as if she was actually hurt in the encounter with Pentagon last week. I know. I was almost, like, worried that it was an IRL thing until I learned that mm -hmm. they were all, they, that all of those were acquired on, the, the that all that shit was taped on the same night. I was like, wait, did she actually, like, fuck up her ankle when yeah, she, I, when she got Yeah, I assume her ankle again? is fine with considering they taped this on the same show. Yeah. And the same day as the attack, so I assume she's all good. Yeah, but either way... The nice little touch on Melissa. Good job. But she she's announcing for the match either way. And I kind of feel bad that she has to announce the guy that just tried to break her arm for the fight. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but we clearly know who she's rooting for. Yep. And so, yeah, sexy versus Penta. Again, random little beef they generated, but I'm super here for it. Mm-hmm. Penta, I mean, not to not to act like a filthy SJW, but Penta does in a lot of ways represent all of the toxic dudeness that that sexy seems to be vehemently opposed to. He's just this big boy who wants to hurt people because he can and because he's strong and probably think pro, pro, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Penta's like, yeah, you're just a woman. You can't be match up to a man. Like I wouldn't be surprised. I, I doubt Pentagon Jr. Mm-hmm. in this iteration has the most progressive politics. But but either way what? it's a yeah, no, sh- shocking, I know. Uh the man who who worships some some evil deity probably probably isn't a isn't a big fan of the DNC platform. But mm-hmm. um but but regardless, pe- uh, sexy star is is not happy with him for good reason he's tried to hurt a lot of people she cares about so she's a great she's a surprisingly really good opponent for him a great Mm -hmm. of all the baby faces to square up i because i i've been wondering a little bit like who can be the champion against penta and sexy is kind of the perfect embodiment of that she is a very great champion of the people as character and penta is very much Mm -hmm. against the people because he keeps he keeps hurting the little guys so so Sexy is a great matchup for him, and they work really well in ring together. Um, they they have they they match up their styles well. Sexy's great at at responding to Penta's brutal violence, and Penta's good at at keeping an eye on on Sexy's quick agility moves. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I I got a huge kick out of the match. I thought it was a great it was a great moment. Um, and pleasantly surprised that at the end of it. Sexy gets the dub. I kind of wasn't expecting that. Yeah, through all this is 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 despite Penta's best efforts, and Penta does hit her with a lot of his big moves. Mm. Uh, he pretty much gets every hits everything except uh, the package pile driver and the arm bar and the arm breaker move. Yeah, but she she perseveres through it all, and eventually she is able to pick up the win. And, you know, Melissa Santos is super happy. She clearly is, like, celebrating from the ring yeah. side. And yep. Penta's just like, I hate everything. This is this I hate everything. Mm-hmm. That's For so today, cool. Pentagon Jr. has been defeated, but I'm sure he'll be back. Oh, I'm sure. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> yep. And then we get the weight room scene. Uh, we have Johnny Mundo doing some super complex routine where he's both, like, doing like pull-ups and and arm curls bicep curls at the same time or something to that effect and in comes alberto el patron to talk some more shit yeah they're really they're really going hard on this rivalry dude mm-hmm. patron, patron is patron is a, being a smug dick about this yeah I really, I, it's, it's really funny how far we've come from him being introduced as this as this cultural champion to mm-hmm. just him dicking on johnny mundo for some reason yeah he's he's basically like johnny i see you're working hard to prepare for your trio's title match tonight oh wait you're not in the trios title tournament match. Yeah. And he's basically like, you're really talented, but you never win anything because you're a loser. Yeah, loser. And the whole th- at the end of it, Moon is just like, yeah, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. He's 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 trying to like tempt Johnny to something of 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 ba- he's basically doing an always the bridesmaid, never the bride meme on Johnny mm-hmm. Mundo, trying to get some sort of rise out of him. I wonder where that's gonna lead but yeah he's 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 basically being like man it sucks that you keep being in second place well bye bye so mm-hmm. we're clearly gonna get the two of them in ring together at some point which i'm already preemptively kind of excited for because they are two very different wrestlers mm-hmm. Patron's a little more old school and and johnny well he does crossfit <laughs> he's crossfit parkour bro <laughs> he's a, oh yeah pro he's, he's he's hardcore parkour so that that'll be that'll be wild to see the two of them yeah. uh, eventually meet up so th- it's fun to get little teases at that i, I mm-hmm. enjoy both of them uh we, t- we talk about cinematography all night well on this particular segment they literally just spin the camera the entire time <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. They 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 realized they had some good cinematography in the last one, and the cinematographer got really cocky, so he's just like, I have one vision. Spinning. Spinning. <laughs> Spinning, that's a good trick. Let's do it for the entire they fucking they fucking battlefield earth the spinning here. And they even have cuts to just kind of restart the spin. I know. Every time you think the spin's over, it just go right back into it. going all oh, man, man. They, 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 the cinematographer to to steal to, to to steal a quote from Roger Ebert or to paraphrase, the cinematographer saw that spinning during a confrontation scene was a cool effect sometimes, so he just decided to do it all the time. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that, so I, I was very dizzy by the end of that. Like I told David when we cut back to the ring, thank God, a stationary <laughs> camera. camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it was so, it was so fucking funny. Mm-hmm. They, they, they really got cheeky with that one. Oh, God. Oh yeah, and God. so we start the ep- – we continue the episode on with our main event. We uh, only two skip planned matches for the night, but the trios triple threat match for the trios title. A lot of threes in here. We have Tejano, Cage, and King Cuerno, the team of Big Rick, his cousin the Mac, and Killshot, and then Son of Havoc on Helico and Ivalice. I can't remember if I've asked this before. Are they cousins IRL? I don't believe they are. No, okay. pretty sure. Actually, I'm 100% confident they're not because Big Rick is from South Africa and Willie Mac is from America. So oh, very shit. confident they're not IRL related. Oh, shit. Anyway, oh. to the match. Yes. Well, I mean, just generally quality fucking... Oh, wait, no, before oh, we start, sorry. have to shout out the best line in these in this entire two-episode stretch. Of when Angelico, Evil East, and Son of Havoc get introduced. Mm, uh, yes! Mass Striker refers to them as they put the fun and dysfunctional. Oh, and yeah, I good shit. That. So to me, they are now team fun and dysfunctional. And yeah, I'm be so- only referring to them as such. That's how I'm probably going to refer to them. Yeah, fun, the fun and dysfunctional. <laughs> so everyone, everybody is, is, coming to ta- is coming on down here. And. It's a it's a really fun match. Like it, it's everybody is just kind of doing getting their shit in. Like it's just nonstop action. Yeah, they, there's there's I, it, there was so much I wasn't able to retain mm-hmm. a whole lot of highlights in a way. But overall, just like every everything was was really good. It, they they have a great running bit where Evil East just can't seem to get tagged in, and she's getting increasingly angry about it because of mm-hmm. course she is, and. And it kind of it kind of got to pay off badly for her because then at one point she does like she jumps off the apron and does a move to I believe to Hano I think so, and yeah. like she like tweaks her knee and yeah. for realsies by the way and oh. for the yeah that's for realsies with her oh, and so the rest of the episode she's just kind of limping, limping around, around fucked up I think at one point too she tries to jump on Big Rick and Mac and gets caught yeah but that's and, that's late that's, that's late in the match that's okay. late in the match oh god yeah okay so I guess Ivalice fucks up her knee for real <laughs> oh no mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but we, we get a lot of nice fun back and forth. So everybody gets there, kind of gets to have their moment to shine. And really when we get the thing kicked into gear is at one point, uh, forget who, di- I think Son of Havoc dives onto Tejano is I think what happens. Somebody dives onto Tejano for this. And Tejano falls backwards into Davari, who's been sitting front row for these last Oh, yeah, years. that was, that was Son of Havoc. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, to hot Davari after getting his drink spilled all over him, he's like, you know what? Fuck this! <laughs> and, and he just starts going to town on Tejano. Yup, yup. And the announcers are like, "What the fuck? I mean, you just you just got here and got a ticket, dude." But yeah. I mean, I guess also this is an anyone go and anything goes, anyone's welcome fight club. So I guess it's okay. <laughs> yeah, although I noticed that off in the background, they had the ref just straight up not looking, and I'm wondering if they mm-hmm. if the ref was doing that to avoid 
seeing it and having to do a DQ, but it's like, what the fuck? It's such a weird little thing of, of like the ref just kept getting, was staring off the other way, arguing with Rick about something. Thing. Yeah, that is so, Yeah, he has to. He has to pretend he's not seeing it. That's so ridiculous because because the Davari sequence is a, is a couple minutes long. So it's just several minutes of the ref just not looking where the action was. You'd think Rick Knox was the referee, but he's actually not. It's <laughs> Marty. As, it's Marty Asias this time. Oh man, no, Danny Davis. It's not. No. It's, we're not. We're not. We don't got any of the crooked ones out here. It's a, it's an actual no. dude. Just, I guess, being an incompetent boob because he needed to take stupid pills for the sake of this match. Yep. So eventually, the fact that Davari kicks Tejano's ass leads to him getting pinned. Yeah. And the whole team is by kill shot, and the whole team is out. The oh, Legion no. of Doom is out of here first. Oh, no. That was that was wild to me, too. I was not remotely expecting that. Mm-hmm. But, Damn. They they got they got yeeted early on, and I'm wondering what's gonna happen to the Legion of Doom after this because they're they're too powerful to just disband after this. Some shit's gonna go down. I'm, I feel the bone. Yeah. So now we we then we get it, the rest of the match the three on three of of Rick of Rick Mac and Killshot with uh, Fun and Dysfunctional, <laughs> and at this point though, like Fun and Dysfunctional is also running out of gas real fast. Because oh, yeah. Evil Lisa is, is real injured. Uh, t- on Helico is Kayfabe getting his ass handed to him. Yep. There's not a lot of gas left in this tank for anybody. And so it's it's the it's kill shot and like kill shot Rick and Mac are just kind of like are kind of in just in control, dominating the match. Mm. But eventually the the dysfunctional team they just they just kept fighting. They nobody's got bigger heart in this match than Son of Havoc, son. Oh my god, I know. And then Helico's got the skill, and Evil East is mm. she, uh, she's got the drive, I suppose. Yeah, she's she, she just, is fighting. She's, she's fighting so hard through this injury. She's, fu- she's fueled on pure spite. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 I'll I'll touch more on this later, but it does kind of you notice it starts to form a kind of de facto cohesion between the three of them. Yes. The, mm. I think uh, Stryker, when his long, long monologue at the end of this episode <laughs> covers it. Yeah. But yeah. They, the story they're trying to tell through this match and the next one Uh-oh. is this team is this team fi- learning to work together as a group after not wanting to be, have anything to do with each other when this all started. Finally, the answer to can they coexist is yes! They can coexist! And eventually, uh, I've they win, they beat, uh, I believe, I think they pin Killshot. They, yeah, they win the match. They win the match. Sound like a bitch and he he gets, does get, he, 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 had his, he had his big moments, but here comes the good guys. Yeah, he just gets toppled. Yep, and they win the match, and they're celebrating. And Dario Cueto just pops out, look with a stunned look on his face. Oh, he does not look happy. He cannot. He can't believe this is happening. He very much doesn't like it. Yeah, no. He's like, why didn't my bad guys win? I, like, I, I, what I mean, is congratulations. this? Congratulations. I mean, sure, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. I, I, he's literally like, "Wow, I literally didn't expect you guys to come out like this." I put you guys. He, 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 he stops short of saying, "I put you guys together" is a meme. Like, mm-hmm. he's so fucking confused. It's hilarious, and it's 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 fun to see Dario put on the back foot a little bit, but only a little mm-hmm. bit because, of course, Dario. He has had a, a he had a plan B. B. He has. A, he always has back. I really want to know what would happen if he didn't have a plan B for this and uh, surprise, surprise, the crew gets brought out as no, no, you think you won. You didn't actually win. You, you have a, you have the, the real final fight is with the crew. I have to wonder if the crew would have gotten real mad. If, if like team Cuerno won and they didn't get to come out, I wonder how they would have taken that. To me, I, I have to assume that Daria would have put the crew in this position, no matter who won that final. You know what? That's fair because I feel like if Team Cuerno won, Daria would have put the crew 
in their place to to just to humiliate the crew because i guarantee mm-hmm. you the crew would get knocked around by team cuerno easy so i feel i feel like it's tears right of, of at what level dario can use people so mm-hmm. so in that case he'd be like oh yeah you have to fight the crew and then he just sits back and watches the crew get humiliated it's like yeah fuck you don't ever show your face in my temple again why you do you fight you you, come back you, wait, you worthless pieces of trash but yeah. It is uh, the crew is coming out for a no DQ match in our main event for the trios tag team title. Yeah, I, I, and I thought for a second Dario might be a little bit merciful and let them wait till now. Oh no, he makes them go right after this. Oh, I, nope, sorry, we're starting right now. Yep. And the first part of this match is just the crew going to town. It's the crew doing what the crew does best, which is ganging up and dicking on people with their kendo stick. Yep. Look, but look, hold, look. The, the crew's effective, but they, they don't exactly have a variety of tactics. No, they 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 stick with what works, and that's it. That um, awesome. And we get some cool stuff, which uh, I set the big setup for later is you got Bale and Angelico brawling up the steps, yeah. and they're fighting over near where Dario's office is, and eventually Bale throws Angelico over the railing onto the roof of Dario's office. Yeah. And just leaves him there for dead. So yeah. I'll have to go deal with something else. Check off San Helico as well <laughs> on this episode. Oh, no. But now that we have the numbers advantage, they're beating down Son of Havoc. And eventually it all comes down to Ivelisse. She's yep. in the middle of the ring. She's got one good leg. And the crew is ready to pounce. They got their kendo sticks. Time to go to town on the weak link. Yep. But then Son of Havoc makes his triumphant, heroic comeback. And, like, they call out on commentary is that, yes, he did it for the titles, but he also helped Ivelisse. He helped his ass. After all this time. Yep. And, again, this is what I was talking about with their force to work together. And Mm -hmm. they they had – they they do a great little job of showing in this storyline – that all three of them, they, they, they clearly feel disrespected by what Dario's doing to them, but none of them are the type to take shit like this sitting down. And it starts off as a very individualistic thing for them. They all just are in their own pursuit of glory, everyone else be damned. But I think they all, we see that they start to realize in real time, if they want to make this happen, they have to work with each other. They have to to have some way to have team cohesion. I don't understand the how they how they were able to put their egos aside, but they did. And at the end of it, yeah, Son of Havoc comes to the rescue of his borderline abusive ex-girlfriend. Personal growth in a weird way, and personal growth from Eve Least that she takes it and doesn't bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Uh, they get some, and then just to make the extra save on Helico, the jumps from. Well, well, first, well, first I want to point out too mm-hmm. that after Havoc makes his comeback, Ivelisse grabs the kendo stick and starts mm-hmm. railing on. Oh yeah, that does happen first. She, yes, she gets she gets her moment too. She and she finally works off of what Havoc gives her to mm-hmm. work with. That she got incredible. one good leg. Yep, and yeah, she got one good leg, but she can use a kendo stick. Yeah. And, Beats all them de- them fuckers down, it, but it then was a glorious moment. Yep, yeah. and then and then we get the moment is Dario Dar- is the, just to be clear. Dario Quinn's office is several feet away from the ring. I don't know the exact measurements, but there is a a separation between the ring and the rooftop. So on Helico vaults off of the roof and lands in the middle of the ring to uh, to land on the crew. And like, goddamn, my heart was racing a minute after after when that happened. And like, I already knew he was gonna do that because he was on the roof. I was like, he's gonna go jump off that stupid thing, isn't he? I did not kind of see that coming. I saw his, I saw him getting his ass handed to him, and I thought, oh well, rip and hell. No, Flyboy went all the way, and he flew down to that ring. It was an incredible moment. Stunts like that are they're used so well. I oh my god. It was so fucking glorious. 
Holy mm-hmm. shit. And, uh, and eventually it all kind of leads to like a double team opportunity where on one on one corner you got the shooting star press from Son of Havoc in the other corner, you just get a, a crossbody from Angelico and Eva Lee's in the middle directing traffic. Yeah. And they get stereo the uh, uh, top oh rope moves God. to get the double pin. One, two, three. They have prevailed. The fun and dysfunctional are your first trios tag team champions. It's such a glorious moment. And you know, god damn it, Austin was right again. The what started off as god damn it, why aren't we done with this storyline has turned into something incredible. <laughs> Fuck you. Has I knew it! God damn it! Every time. How how do you do this? Every time. Son of a bitch. No, it's it's it, no, it's great though. It's so cool to watch all three of them grow, and they they can they 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 learn to work together, and they're the champions. They're wearing belts. Havoc is wearing a well-deserved belt. Evil East and Helico, sure, whatever. But Havoc is wearing a belt, and it feels great. And yeah, Evil East and Han Helico have gone through their own little mm-hmm. bits of personal growth here and there too. Evil East is learning to finally eat some humble pie, and and Helico's. Le- not lightning McQueening it nearly as much, I suppose. Yeah. He yes, and 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 Havoc is the glue that holds it all together. He's the heart mm-hmm. of the team. Yep. I am happy. And then we get uh Matt Stryker for the last five minutes of this show. Like while they're celebrating, he just like quickly runs down the entire storyline just to make yeah. sure you get it. No, it's a cool recap though. I mean it I is it's, it's, what it does. it's pretty sweet. But they they win. Rah, rah, we end this episode on a happy note. We don't always get that around here. <laughs> no, but it was it was a really triumphant final moment, and mm-hmm. I I feel really good, and I'm excited to see where our tree our trios tag champions go after this because they yep. make a great fucking trio. <laughs> they do, and Ooh. so that kind of wraps the book on these two episodes of Lucha Underground. Just another really solid, strong showing from Lucha yeah, Underground shocker. as we continue Most along. Really good or something. Jeez. It is. It's weird how this show became a cult favorite in the wrestling community. Who could have guessed? Hmm, wonder why. Mm-hmm. But it's just a fantastic show. And as always, I'm always excited till next time we get to do these episodes. No, we'll yes. see where it goes next. Yes. But that is it for now. Uh, next time on the Noobs and Knockouts podcast, I'm very excited I'm because not. it's time to start is it? the Katie Vick arc do, as do we, have we, we, we head to 2003. I don't want to. A, a great time in the WWE. No I complaints, really no it. problems whatsoever. And... Austin, you D- Triple H is the world heavyweight champion on Monday Night Raw. That's and not, oh no, he needs a challenger for the upcoming pay per view, and we're gonna spend some time figuring out who that's gonna be. Is is it is it Kane, and is it gonna be really stupid? Now, why would I give that away? I mean, and, you uh, did mention you did mention Kane last time we talked about this. Okay. Oh, oh man, this 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 arc is already off to a great start. We haven't even started yet. Yes. So that is next time we begin our trip through one of WWE's most infamous storylines. Help! Somebody, please rescue me. Can somebody take my place? I don't no. want to do this show anymore, guys. Help! Somebody, I'm begging you. Nope. You have to do it. Of course, oh, no. I say so. You, oh you. no. You're part of the intro. In fact, do the plugs now. <laughs> oh god. Oh, fine, fine. It's like my marching orders. So from from the, sure. All right, fuckers. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Noobs and Knockouts podcast. We're so delightful to have you all here. We hope you've had a great time with us. Uh, and, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you are a returning listener, viewer, what have you. Thank you so much for once again welcoming us back into your eardrums, your eyeballs, what have you. We are so, so happy that you choose to spend your time with us week after week here on the Noobs and Knockouts podcast. If you are a first-time listener, viewer, what have you, 
thank you so so much for joining us. We are so delighted that you that you uh, came and joined us. We hope you had a great time. Uh, we know we sure did. Uh, if if you didn't or if you did have a great time and you would like to keep having a great time with us you are more than welcome to we here at the noobs and knockouts podcast like to think that we are welcoming to both noobs and knockouts alike so whether you are a brand new member of the wrestling fandom or a seasoned veteran we hope you feel welcome here and that you're having a great time and if you would like to continue to join us and you're not entirely sure how to do so well not to worry my friends i have you covered first of all you can find us on youtube we are the noobs and knockouts podcast on youtube hit subscribe Ring that bell. Make sure it turns a nice little salad color so you get notifications every single time we drop a new episode. Like, share, uh, comment, add us to your playlist. Check out our playlist. If you want to follow any of the uh, arcs that we do, uh, very specifically, if you any any of the singular storylines without having to jump around, Austin has been kind enough to organize every single episode or every single arc that we follow into its own playlist. I uh highly recommend it it's a great little organizational thing uh, if you want to follow a specific storyline one way or the other check all that out they're they're great and plus if you watch the more recent episodes you can actually see our beautiful wonderful faces attached to it see us 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 gesticulate and motion and 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 speak words with our actual mouths it, it's it's just a great time check it out uh, if you if you enjoy the visual element, or if you just want to support us on YouTube, it's a great time. Uh, if you want the audio only experience, of course, you can find us on three of the best places to find your podcast, which would be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Rate us, review us, download us, whatever the hell it is that gets our metrics up there. Just oh, that sweet sweet engagement, we love it so much. Check out the Noobs and Knockouts podcast on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts for that audio-only experience. Unfortunately, we don't have playlists organized over there, but, you know, you can just scroll around a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Uh, uh, and and just be sure to, to check us out on there and tell that algorithm, hey, these guys are pretty cool. Uh, we think maybe more people should be listening to them. And, uh, listening to them. I don't know. I, I'm just saying. This is me personally. Uh, also, we are on social media. There are kind of three main places outside of our show where you can find us. First of all is Twitter. We are at Noobs and Knox Pod on Twitter. That's Noobs, the letter N, Knox Pod on Twitter. I'm pointing to it on screen. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube right now, bada bing, bada boom, bottom left corner. Uh, check us out there. Uh, we 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 drop dank memes. We interact with the broader wrestling fandom. We engage in the discourse. We post every single time we drop a new episode. So you guys know what the hell's going on. And, of course, the highlight of our Twitter is, of course, live tweeting weekly wrestling my friend what is on the docket coming up yes upcoming of course every wednesday night 8 p.m eastern on tnt is aew down to mat light. boom boom as uh we as the one wrestling show i consistently watch live every week so let's go ahead and live talk too. about it Hey, yes. Talk about it live. Of course, sometimes David takes over for me when I'm otherwise occupied. Mm -hmm. uh, as, of course, that we also keep an eye on the WWE, a AEW, and Impact Wrestling pay-per-views coming up. So, upcoming for that, for WWE, uh, is WWE Day 1, airing on January 1st, 2022. Though I will say I will, I can already tell you I'm not going to be watching that show because that's college football day, baby. Oh, Sorry. But yeah, go ahead and, put in, and plug that. Uh, you are interested, of course, either that is available on Peacock, WWE streaming service. I plug it enough on this show, not going to say more. Hmm. Uh, the next pay-per-view after that is Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill Ooh. on January 8th. 2022 uh so far we only have a couple matches for it. we have the impact knockouts world championship match between mickey james and diana perrazzo two of the best women's wrestlers in the world today they're going to be going at it. it's going to be sweet as well as the knockouts ultimate x match uh when the men have the ultimate x match it is the ultimate match of high flying flippy dudes so if you like Lucia Underground. Dang. I'm telling you, you're going to like Ultimate X. And for the oh, first yeah. time ever, the women are getting involved in it and is for a shot at the Impact Knockouts title. Oh. Uh, uh, we obviously have more matches to come as time goes on, and we'll be letting you know about that as they uh, are announced. Then and for AEW, the first, uh, they only have, they like Impact Wrestling, only have quarterly pay per views. And their next pay per view is a revolution in 2022. Uh, 
don't we know when we don't have a date yet uh, based on prior years it'll be late february early march but we don't have a date set yet for revolution so right now don't have any information to give you but we'll be mentioning it as time goes on and that is where we are at for the live tweeting experience Hell yeah. So be sure to check all that out. It's a great time. Uh, when Austin's at the range, usually uh, he's very insightful, very funny. I can guarantee you he's a great time to to uh, spend your time watching wrestling with, even if it's a digital-only format. I like to think I'm kind of fun when I take over, too, every now and again. But, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, be sure to check it out. It's a great time on Twitter. So check us out at Noobs and Noxpot on Twitter. And then, of course, there's our email address. If you'd like to get, us, uh, get in contact with us, directly you can find us at noobs and knockouts pod at gmail.com that's noobs the word and this time at knockouts pod at gmail.com come say hi to us tell us what you think of the show what you like what you don't like things that you want to see more of less of arcs storylines special episode requests any other wrestling adjacent paraphernalia you can throw our way uh and tell us just you know that you like hearing our beautiful sweet dulcet tones that come out of our vocal cords week after week does anything come say hi start some discourse with us yell at us for our bad takes whatever we love hearing from people say hi we'll say hi back it's a great time noobs and knockouts pod at gmail.com to get in direct contact with us and of course you can finally find us on patreon we are also the noobs and knockouts podcast on patreon one dollar a month gets you early access to episodes and a shout out at the end of each episode see y'all next time hasta luego